last week. Um, today we'll read the new book and one of the more relevant applications of exponential functions in our day-to-day -day life, and that is the idea of compound interest. So, we assume that we at least have some idea what interest is. Let's frame it in terms of an investment. We have some kind of investment, and the value of the investment is growing exponentially. We'll phrase that in terms of an interest rate. Um, so an investment is growing based on some annual interest rate R. And if that were all we had, then we wouldn't really need to talk about compound interest as its own thing. The value of the investment would just be written like any other exponential function, q of t equals p times 1 plus r to the power of t, where we remember that this interest rate is going to be given as a percentage, probably it has to be written as a decimal in that formula. So these uh, these examples always sort of excite my class resentment. But if you have a twenty thousand dollar investment earning three point seven percent annual interest, then the value of the investment after t years is that initial investment times 1, here let me go ahead and write it, 1 plus the growth rate raised to the power of t. The only thing that makes this a little different is the idea of compounding interest multiple times per year. So the idea behind this, I mean, if you think of an investment as earning interest every year, then probably the natural way to do that is you've got an investment. The value of the investment does not change over the course of the year. And then at the end of the year, you earn interest and the value of the investment jumps. If, an, if the, an investment or if interest is compounded multiple times per year, then maybe instead of this picture, you have a picture like this. 
halfway through the year, you earn some kind of interest, then maybe you earn interest again at the end of the year. Now, if you earn interest, say, twice per year, and let's say this interest rate, this annual interest rate, is 5%. Well, that's an annual interest rate, not a biannual interest rate. So you cannot earn 5% interest twice per year. What's going to happen instead if you earn interest twice per year? is that the first time you get interest, it will be 2.5%. And the second time you get interest, it will be 2.5%. So you're earning 5% interest here, but not all at once. And this is in contrast to if you just earn interest once. If you just earn interest once, you get 5% all at once. If you earn interest four times per year, So, if you earn interest quarterly, then you're going to earn that interest in increments of 1.25%. So, it's going to be 5% but broken up into four 1.25% pieces. And the way a compound interest works, I mean, you might look at this and naively think these are all the same thing. You're earning 5% interest no matter how you do this. But that's not the case. The more times you earn interest per year, the faster the value of the investment grows. So let's say We have a $50,000 investment, and we're looking at 5% interest. Thank you. And let's say that interest is compounded once. So at the end of the year, you earn 5% interest. So at the beginning of the year, you have $50,000. At the end of the year, you have 50000 plus 5% of 50,000, 5,000, um, 52,500 dollars. Compare this to 
earning interest twice per year. So at the start of the year, you have $50,000. Halfway through the year, we earn interest. Uh, we don't earn all 5% of the interest halfway through the year. We earn half of that, 2.5% interest. So, 51,250. Now the key point is that at the end of the year, you earn interest again. 51,250, but this time we're not earning interest on $50,000. We're earning interest on a larger sum, on 51,250 dollars. And we end up with 52,000 531. Give or take a few cents. So you see that even though we have a total of 5% interest, splitting it up in this way caused the investment to be worth more at the end of the year than if it was only compounded once. So let's try to write down an equation. I'm phrasing this in terms of an investment which is maybe optimistic. I suspect for most of us in this room, we mainly run into compound interest in the context of things like credit card debt, but we'll phrase it in terms of an investment. The value of the investment after T years well, it's still with the initial value, it's still one plus, then instead of one plus r, we have one plus r divided by n. That's reflecting the fact that if we're compounding multiple times, we don't get all of the interest every time we compounded. If we're taking 5% and compounding twice, then we only get half of that 5% interest when we compound. And then in the exponent, the N shows up there as well. And the reason the N is showing up in the exponent is to reflect the fact that, I mean, if N equals 4, then after 5 years, we haven't compounded five times, we've compounded 20 times. The number of times per year times the number of years. So hence the N T. 
At this point, once we know how to set up the form to those, we can do basically anything with these exponential functions that we were doing with exponential functions last week. So, for example, let's say a $10,000 investment earns 2.7% interest. Compounded quarterly. When will this investment be worth? Twelve thousand dollars. A question like this, I mean, is not fundamentally complicated. We first write down a formula for the value of the investment using this equation on the previous frame. Here is the value of the investment after t years. We want to know when the value of the investment equals 12,000. So I said this isn't fundamentally complicated, but that word fundamentally is maybe doing a lot of work here. There are quite a few steps. It's just that if you take the steps one by one, they're probably not super hard. Probably the first thing we should do is just get a decimal for that. So, one plus point zero two seven divided by four is one point zero zero six seven five. So Ten thousand times one point zero zero six seven five to the power I wish Zoom wouldn't do that to the power of four T equals twelve thousand. We're at some point going to have to take a logarithm, but not yet. Um, we do not want to take logarithms unless our exponential is by itself. And that exponential is not by itself. We've got that 10,000 in front of it. To get rid, I mean, this 10,000 is being multiplied. So to get rid of multiplication, division. 
And on the left, that 10,000 on top will cancel with the 10,000 below. On the right, we'll have partial cancellation. The zeros will cancel, and we have 12 over 10. Now our exponential is by itself, and we can take the logarithm. Taking the logarithm, will bring the power down in front of the law. This 4t comes down. And what we do now maybe depends on how comfortable we are with some, with just manipulating algebraic expressions. We've got a four and we've got a logarithm of 1.0067. And we want to get rid of both those things to leave T by itself. Depending on how comfortable you are with these algebraic manipulations, this is one step or two steps. To do it in one step, you divide by four times the logarithm. To do it in two steps, you'd maybe start by dividing by four. That will get rid of this four. And then you can divide both sides by the logarithm. And that will get t by itself. It doesn't, in a practical way, really matter because we're going to be putting this into our calculator. So it's a few more button presses, maybe, but. the log of 12 tenths divided by 4 or divided by the log of 1.00675. Six point seven seven years. So that's our crash introduction to compound in. Trust. Does anybody have any questions before we get the in-class workout?